how do you go from uh, a slower data rate to a faster data rate? So, all what you would do is to do what is called as baud interleaving. So, we will talk about baud interleaving. Uh, before we talk about this baud interleaving, we would now like to now see how this 155.52 Mbps get distributed in that frame. So, for that we need to know what else is required in that frame. So, the frame requires a header and then you have the packet and then you have a trailer information. Sometimes you do not really have the trailer information, it is just the header and the packets. Now, what is the information that is required in the header? Uh, we broadly said source and destination and so on, but now we will get into a slightly uh, little more detailing of what is required in the header. So, let us say you have uh, multiple sources um, of low data stream. So, each transmit, so this is all electrical, right? electrical and each of them have very slow data rate. So, there is an STM multiplexer which is an electrical domain device which multiplexes low data rates into a slightly higher data rate. Now, at this point you get you have your optical sorry electrical to optical converter, then you have the fiber the distance through which you want to propagate and then you have the optical to electrical optical to electrical converter and it gets back to a point. So, this part of this uh, optical layer is not shown. So, you actually have fiber here optical to electrical, electrical to optical converter right and it uh, reaches a point where you require regeneration which means maybe you have uh, reached the end of a uh, uh, particular link budget. So, let us say for the transmitter and the receiver that you have, you have uh, some uh, let us say 100 kilometers or 200 kilometers or 500 kilometers whatever is allowed by the transmitter, receiver etcetera. You reach a point which is your regenerator. Now, in today's optical communication, the regeneration process is done in the electrical domain. There are of course, there are lot of research uh, in trying to convert that regeneration also into the optical domain, but that is still in the research phase. Most of the regeneration, now I am not talking about amplification. So, this link could also have even here in the optical link, you could also have amplifiers in it. So, this is including amplifiers is what you will have between this uh, a section what is called as a section. A section will have uh, electrical to optical converter, fiber, optical amplifier and optical to electrical uh, converter and amplifiers at first in between if necessary. But when it comes to regeneration, so this could be physically maybe 1000 kilometers away or 10,000 kilometer away even though uh, the line is shown very slow. Uh, we are just showing the functionalities of each of these points. So, regeneration, uh, regenerator basically uh, converts uh, the electrical domain to, uh, uh, so in, the input to the regenerator is an electrical signal. The uh, signal gets reshaped, uh, retimed, reamplified, etc. at the regenerator and then it goes back into your uh, optical domain. So, again it goes back to an optical domain like this until it reaches the next section and so on until it reaches a point where a part of your data. So, remember your STM frame could have um, multiple of STM, the STM frame could have multiple of this STM1 frames right. So, you could have STM1, you could have another STM1. Uh, the next possible STM is STM4. So, you could probably integrate multiple STM1s to STM4, uh, right. And uh, the point at which you are uh, reaching a logical decision where you need to add or uh, drop a specific data uh, stream, you could add a lower uh, speed frame you into a higher speed frame or you could also drop a lower speed frame from a higher speed frame or you could drop the entire uh, higher speed frame. Okay? So, essentially you reach a line terminal equipment which is an add drop multiplexer and the section between or the part of the link or the um, 
the part of the link between your uh, the portions of the network between your STM multiplexer to your add drop multiplexer uh, or between two neighboring add drop multiplexers is what is called as a, a um, line. Right. So, inside this add drop multiplexer, you could have an STM multiplexer, demultiplexer. You could be dropping off channels, you could be adding channels here. Okay. And between two uh, STM multiplexer is your path. So, you need to have in the header, you need to have information about which section to follow, which line to follow and which path to follow. You need these three header information. Your STM frame, the framing that uh, happens here that will require which uh, addresses corresponding to headers or addresses corresponding to the section that it has to follow. Find out where it has to uh, 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 undergo this um, regeneration and it also has to find out where is the next add drop multiplexer point at which this data has to get added or dropped. Okay, So, these are the different uh, layers inside your STM uh, frame. So, uh, of course, we have talked about section layer and optical layer. So, the frame structure has header. So, this is the frame structure. You have 90 columns and 90 rows. So, that will give you 810 uh, bytes of information of which the first three columns are the header information. Remember, we need a section overhead we need also uh, need a line overhead. Section overhead is going to tell you which section it has to go. Line overhead is going to tell you which add drop multiplexer it has to uh, target so that the data can get dropped or added at that particular point. Um, so, these two overheads, these two addresses uh, require uh, the nine rows and the first three columns, right? So, nine times uh, three. 27 bytes are taken up by the overheads. The rest 87 columns has payload, the synchronous payload in, uh, uh, information. Payload means your data of which the first column in the 87 column has some um, address corresponding to the data itself. Maybe it will say what modulation it is, maybe it will say what kind of FEC is used, uh, what is the, um, you know, some, some information about the coding and so on. So, this column, the fourth column has information specific to the data that you are transporting. Whereas, these columns have information specific to where it has to be routed. So, totally you have 810 bytes. So, each uh, column, uh, each element can carry 810 uh, one byte of information and you know that one byte is 8 bits. So, the total number of bits in one frame of uh, STM is actually 6480, 810 times 8. Uh, the time duration over which this modulation is happening, this framing is happening is 125 microseconds. Now, this is 125 microseconds uh, for STM 4 sorry STM 1. In fact, the frame size remains as 125 microseconds irrespective of what uh, multiplicity you are using. Okay? So, let us take the case uh, example of STM 1. Uh, 125 microseconds is the total frame duration. So, which means that in one second, you can have 8000 frames. 1 divided by 125 microseconds, you do the math, it will be 8000 frames which means that the rate at which you are able to transport this bits, which is not the data rate, but it is the line rate. Okay? The line rate is actually 8000 times you are transporting 6480 bits. That gives you 51.84 Mbps. Okay? So, strictly speaking, this is an STS one frame because um, as you saw earlier, uh, STM one uh, has 155. So, this is STS 1 frame. This is the framing for STS 1. Okay. Uh, now, the payload rate is different from the line rate because as you are transporting this, so what you are saying is that you will be transporting 1s and zeros. 
this ones and zeros has not just the information corresponding to the payload, the actual information that you want to transport, it has information corresponding to this uh, section overhead, the line overhead and the uh, 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 payload overhead. right? So, that is going to be smaller by how much you can just say now the payload rate is going to be uh, 820 into 80 minus um, 27 into 8. Right? This if you subtract and multiply that number that will be your payload overhead. So, all this uh, standards actually gives you the line rate and it is not the data rate. The data rate is going to be much uh, smaller because the first uh, uh, three columns are going to be used by your uh, different kinds of overheads. Now, how do you do uh, larger data rates? For instance, if you want to do STM4, right? So, all what is done is that the total uh, 125 microsecond time, time duration is kept constant. As I said earlier, that time duration is kept constant. But instead of uh, 90 columns, you have, for example, if you are taking the case of uh, STM4, right, which is 4 times STM1. So, instead of 90 columns, you have 90 into 4, that is 360 columns, okay, and 9 rows. Now, total number of columns for overhead will be 3 times 4, that is 12 columns will get used. So, the time taken for the overhead is also maintained constant. So, 12 columns gets used for overhead. And the remaining 360 minus uh, 12 columns uh, gets used for payload. So, the bit rate will just become, uh, uh, you, you just increase the uh, number by n, uh, by 4 in this case. So, the bit rate is simply becoming n times 51.84 Mbps. So, in your STM4, you have total of 360 columns of which the first uh, four columns are, uh, first 12 columns will be used for your uh, section overhead and line overhead and the rest comes the payload of which the first column again is used by the, for the payload overhead which is the data overhead which is not used up by the uh, network device, it is used right just before the demodulation, right. And this is how you keep uh, scaling from uh, STM uh, 1 to STM n. So, for example, if you are doing a 100 gigabits per second, you can now say that it is 100 giga gigabits per second corresponds to about STM 640. So, you are having partitioning of 125 microseconds to 90 into 640. These many columns of which uh, 3 into 640 columns are used for uh, headers. So, this is how you scale the data rates. Now, SDH and SONET uh, based on circuit switching uh, are the most commonly used protocols in the optical layer. But the new protocol that is emerging is uh, IP uh, simply because uh, in STM you have to establish the route uh, add drop multiplexer, you are already establishing the circuit through which you want to take which is what is embedded in the header information. Uh, whereas, uh, IP is based on uh, packet switching. So, this allows uh, flexible, more flexible routing which is for a dynamic optical uh, network. It follows uh, what is called as a packet switching protocol where every packet from the sender is routed to a destination. It can be uh, through multiple such routers. So, as we discussed in the beginning of uh, this module, uh, the data that needs to be transported gets divided into packets and each packet is handled independently. Each packet can reach the receiver uh, through, uh, the, so the first packet may be re reaching through this path, second packet may be reaching through this path, the third packet may be reaching through this path uh, and at the receiver uh, all these packets are aggregated before demodulation. Now, who takes the uh, routing decision? The routing decision is based on the information, the, it is based on the routing table which is continuously updated based on by the network management software. So, the software keeps track of which part of the network is busy and which part is free 
and based on that, uh, the uh, network management system decides which path the packet should take. Um, and of course, that is uh, dynamically decided based on the availability of resources. So, uh, just to give you an example of uh, what is the data rate that is uh, uh, laid in India. So, this is an example of Railtel uh, taken from Railtel uh, web page. So, they are uh, one of those people who are laying the networks. Um, their SDH is at SDH 16 and SDH 64. The uh, links that are laid already uh, in India across India is what is shown here. Um, STM 64 is shown in blue and STM 16 is shown in uh, pink and we see that the blue lines are much more than the pink line. So, the connectivity is pretty good because we know that uh, STM 16 is at 2.4 uh, gigabits per second and STM 64 is at uh, 10 uh, gigabits per second. So, uh, that makes it clear that most of India is uh, connected with 10 gigabits per second line with uh, uh, the Railtel network. Of course, Railtel is not the only network in India. I just took an example because uh, this data was uh, available in the Railtel web page.